guys, welcome back. This is Hans Stark. This is September 24th, 2020, and we are still in the midst of a pandemic. Um, as for Canada, we had some great few months, like last month, like August, April, and September. The early beginning of September were really great. We didn't have a lot of cases, but since last couple of weeks, the cases have shot back up again as the doctors and the government is telling it that this is in fact the second wave that we are experiencing here in Canada. So for all the international students uh, who are thinking that things are starting to look a bit clear, they're trying to get sorted, things are getting flatter and normal, well the second wave kind of disrupts all of the effort that we did in the first wave and this impacts and changes a lot of things. So today I'm going to be telling you about some news, some facts, and what updates, like what are the new updates and what you should expect for the rest of the year and rest of the student year for 20, the rest of the 2020 and the coming 2021. So starting with what's going on with the economy of Canada. So international students contribute about $22 billion to the Canadian economy each year. So this $22 billion is a really big amount of money that international students bring into Canada and they help support other jobs and as I have a fact here which says the international students have dropped out by about 22 percent as compared to 2019 so there's 22 percent less international students applying to come to Canada and than anywhere else in the world so this is a really big hit for a lot of institutions and colleges and universities across Canada because uh, because of the, the student boom that has occurred in the last five years, a lot of the students and universities have been heavily dependent on international students that come to Canada. They, like, uh, student, these universities are basically operating on the income of international students because they pay three times more than what a domestic student pays. So this has created a, lot, a big imbalance on what's happening. So um, one of the problems that this creates, the shortfall of international students, it creates a long lasting impact for Canada. For example, when students come to Canada and they offer part-time jobs, they usually, they're usually usually jobs like labor jobs. For example, you work in a restaurant, you work at retail stores as a salesman, you work in factories. So these are the kind of jobs that uh, Canadian citizens they don't really want to do that. So these are low wage, minimum wage jobs that people who have been here, they don't really want to do. So, and, but this industry, but this shortage of job, like this shortage of labor that people who are here don't want to do, so they need to get people from outside. And this is where international students fill in the gap. They do these jobs and fill in the gap in the economy and keep the circle going. There's a lot of moving wheels to it. Canada's population is also growing old and it doesn't even have a lot of population. So they also need people to immigrate to Canada. So one thing is clear. It, one thing that's not stopping is that Canada needing international immigrants to survive and go on the next step of the 21st century. So Canada is going to need immigrants. It's not going to stop accepting people like the US did. The US has a lot of people. They don't really need people. But Canada does need people to ensure its survival in the coming future. So these labor jobs, when students come and they fill in, they fill in a shortage of these jobs. But when, since the students are not coming anymore, this is impacting businesses. They don't have the labor. They, they need people to work. And because of also the pandemic, not a lot of people are eating out, going out. So it's affecting a lot of businesses. So this is a two-way effect. It's cutting jobs of people because businesses are not working. And also because there are no people to fill in those jobs. So it's kind of a sector that's getting shut off slowly. So, so the government is doing a lot of things to help students. And uh, let me address some of the concerns about what's going on. Uh, so before it was like um, colleges being dependent on students. So like they got a lot of international students and their money. So they expanded their colleges, for example, Seneca has 12 campuses and it grew to that rate because of all the international students that get admitted into Seneca. But now since the fall has been such drastic and because they're not being able to meet the demands 
and not being able to keep up uh, these colleges now have to restrict courses so for example like a couple of years ago you would find an array of courses like 70 courses for example in a single college or university but now because there's not enough students getting involved not enough money is coming into the economy or the economy of the university or college now they have to cut back on courses so they are just diverting all the resources to the main focused courses where there's the bulk majority of students uh, go into for example engineering doctor like being a doctor business these courses yeah they are gonna be there they're getting funded by but the courses like uh, for example if you're studying um, a coaching program athletics therapy or some those which are not familiar which are not usual like social media marketing these kind of courses they're getting cut down because they don't really have the supplies to maintain these courses so that's one bad thing that's getting dropped off because of this is that the courses are getting affected they're not uh, being enough supplied by staff they're not being supplied by money so that's one of the drawbacks and some of the institutions heavily rely on international students for example Seneca Humber and a couple of colleges like if international students completely stop these colleges are not gonna be operational for the next year that's how heavily dependent they are on international students and the government knows this because international students are when they come in they're not just labor they are also the future growth of Canada because people students do these labor jobs in the initial stages of their studies but later as they are graduated they go on to get higher better jobs which develop the economy on a better scale so international students that come here they're not just laborers filling in those jobs and bringing money but they're also future of Canada so government knows this they have they have this in mind so what they're doing is now they're like some good news for you guys is that they're making it kind of easier like even though international travel suspended a lot of people are not getting work permits the government is doing its best so as of today when I read the latest news what the government is doing is that because the process was a lot lengthy before like you had to give biometrics get approvals get three four approvals the process that it used to go through now the government has cut down on the approval process for example if it was going through five uh, steps of approval process now it's only going through two so it's cutting down time and approval processes so, uh, the government has started again now processing all those applications because when COVID started even the people that were working for the government in the departments where the applications are being processed they shut down so they didn't have people to process applications but now when things got better uh, people started coming back to work and the applications are being processed uh, it's still slower but it's progressing as we go ahead so applications are being processed the times have cut down IRCC have shortened the requirements for visa processes so it's you're highly likely to get a visa now even if you had a little bit of error or anything it's just that you gotta wait you gotta give the government time to cope up with all the backlog that that's there in their system because there's a big backlog countries are facing with a lot of different issues at this time and diverting resources to all these things is a, is a big challenge and they've also cut down on a lot of great things that for students for example before you had to complete the majority of your course like 75 percent of your course in class in Canada to get a postgraduate work permit but now they're like uh, you can complete more up to 50 percent of your course online completely so you can be at your home country and study online and still be able to get the work permit after you're done studying, which was not possible before. So this is really a big relief that the government is giving to you because now you have the convenience of staying at your home, not spending money, paying rent, doing part-time job and trying to get more time and more focused on your studies. Like, yes, it's great. It also comes with a drawback that you're not gonna get the Canadian experience here the way people live but I think it's worth the trade like it's a pandemic I mean that's the best we can hope for like anything any good news is always acceptable in these times so for the uh, upcoming session that's now January because the September session has already commenced and it's pretty much online I was looking for things to go back to normal around January if things were going great but the second wave has hit and it's a lot worse than the first one
a lot more people are getting infected now and these still schools that are already opened in uh, Toronto or Ontario especially uh, in the last month have started closing back again so the trend is coming back of things getting closed up again and I feel like uh, the January intake that's January to April is gonna be online again uh, it's a really high like likelihood that it's gonna be still online so people you have two options either you can wait it out or you can get it done online like those are two options that are pretty much very similar because yeah you're missing out on the experience but you're getting it done from home like I don't know if there's anything better to do at these times you're at home just finish it off yeah and some of the universities are cutting down their thesis but it's not really that much it's not doesn't really makes a big difference so it's really the point of decision where you make if you would like to come to Canada or would you like to stay home and get it done and I guess this is where I'll leave you with the question that how are we gonna deal with this this is Hans Stark and I'm gonna see you guys back again next week and please reach out and I push that subscribe button I'm aiming for a YouTube silver button I need 100,000 subscribers for it I've got 20 now help me get to that 80k thank you so much guys and I'll see you guys back again